Welcome to chapter 10 of the book of Judges. Chapter 9, our last chapter, Avimalek, we found out that he was a ruler. He was called a ruler, not a judge. But now we are in the next two judges in this chapter it mentions, and rose up after Avimelech to deliver Israel, Tholah, son of Fua, son of his uncle, a man of Issachar. Now, Tola was the son of Fua, the son of his uncle. Uh, so I'm, exact, I'm not exactly sure. That's kind of confusing to me. It'll be a nephew, but Tola, the son of Fua. Well, anyway. Oh, maybe it was Avimelech related to him. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, he's a Vizishar, though, so I wouldn't think so. And he dwelt in Samir in Mount Ephraim. And um, we'll go to our map. And uh, Ephra, the mountain of Ephraim, is over in here. Um, we are going to be in Mount Gilead, the Gilead area, which is over here. And he judged Israel twenty and three years and died and was entombed in Samir. Now, this person was uh, mentioned that um, he reigned uh, for 23 years in Ephraim. Now, the other judges had mentioned that some other person was ruling the area, and the people cried out to God, and then the judge came and then ruled. But here we don't have anybody mentioned, just that where he was and he was judged, not that he did any uh, any warfare as such. And then it says, and rose up after him, Aair, the Gileadite, and that was Mount Gilead on the other side of the Jordan. And he judged Israel 20 and two years. And again, this person doesn't have, uh, doesn't mention any person that was, uh, or peoples that were coming against him. And there were born to him 30 sons mounted upon 30 foals, and thirty cities were his, and they called them properties of Aair unto this day, the ones which are in the land of Gilead. And Aair died and was entombed in Camon, uh, wherever that was, over there in uh, Gilead. There's Mount Gilead, and this whole area is called Gilead. And... The sons of Israel proceeded to do the wicked thing before the Lord. Um, that is not a good thing to do. And they served to the Valim and to the Ashtaroths and to the gods of Syria and to the gods of Sidon. So all over the whole area. The gods of Moab, which is on the other side of the Jordan, and to the gods of the sons of Ammon again on the east side of the Jordan, up further north, and to the gods of the Philistines, which are in the Gaza Strip. All of these places, they're gods. And they abandoned the Lord and did not serve to him. Now, here's uh, the key on how what they did. They abandoned the Lord, and they didn't serve to him, do the things that he would have them to do, what, everything that entails quite a bit. I look at uh, the abandonment of the Lord in the United States. Uh, I don't know in any other countries. I'm not there, but I know in the United States, the abandoning of the Lord basically start, starts with, um, in this country, with having an education that is run by humanists, people that don't believe in God. And when they teach all the children, eventually they become older and they have children. And this is what's happened. We've had a couple of generations that have been taught by public school system, by the civil government. And the schools of the uh, Christians are closed up. I went to a Lutheran grade school all eight years and then four years to a Lutheran high school and then in a Lutheran university. And uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, the, the grade school and high school, and it was a wonderful education. And I can't 
exp- explain how important it was to me to have this. Now, my mom would send me to this kind of a school. Uh, there was times when I wanted to get out and go with all my friends who uh, weren't basically, well, a lot of them are Roman Catholic, but other ones went to public school. But I st- stayed with the and you know, went through and graduated. And now I'm glad I did because I learned a lot of things about the Lord in that period of time. But other people that don't know about the Lord, don't have any access to him daily in a school, well, it's taken its toll, and, it's, and they abandoned the Lord, basically, and did not serve to him. They make fun of the people that serve God and do the things of God. Uh, they make fun of the things that God holds in high esteem, like uh, servitude, um, being uh, subservient to people, not to talk back. Uh, it's, you know, ha- t- your rights are more important than anything, and you get what you want to to get, and um, things like that. And so they didn't serve to him. Now, the serving to God can be, take all sorts of, um, manifest itself in different ways. You can be a um, Bible translator like I have, and serving to the Lord. I feel like I'm a bond servant to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can serve uh, in a church, or you can serve in your family. You can even serve in the military, uh, telling people about Christ, living the Christ-like life. In verse 7, and the anger of the Lord was enraged against Israel. Well, if it was enraged against Israel, I can't imagine what it if it wouldn't be enraged against the United States for abandoning him. I believe uh, we are going to see the manifestation of what happens when God's rage comes against this country. This has been predicted for many years, and so far we're holding together. There are still a lot of Christians, and uh, thank, thank, thank God that he is uh, allowing us to live in this country. It's a free country. We can praise him, and uh, many people do. Uh, and he gave them into the hand of the Philistines. That were the ones over in the Gaza Strip. Today they're called the Palestinians, similar to this word. And into the hands of the sons of Ammon. I got. The, I think this is plural. I have to check it out. Uh, the sons of Ammon and Jordan today, uh, further up north on the eastern side of the Jordan. And they dis- disintegrated and crushed the sons of Israel in that year. Eighteen years all the sons of Israel on the other side of the Jordan in the land of the Amorite. Well, now we see the eight, 18 years after these other two judges, and the next judge we won't find out until the next chapter, um, that's Jephthah. But in Gilead, uh, 18 years, um, they served to the uh, other peoples in the land of the Amorite and in Gilead. And the sons of Ammon passed over the Jordan to wage war even against Judah and Benjamin, which were a little further south, and against the house of Ephraim. Uh, and they afflicted the sons of Israel exceedingly. And the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We sinned against you, for we abandoned our God, and we served to the Baalim. So, well, this is the first part of repentance is to realize that we have sinned against God. And without realizing that we are sinners sinning against God, uh, then I don't think uh, a true repentance has taken place. It may be feeling sorry because things have gone bad and you have done bad things and things have gone bad. And so you feel sorry. I'm sorry I did these things because it didn't turn out good. But It's not really looking at the sin of it. And then here it says, we abandoned our God. And that is uh, walking away from the precepts of God. And uh, people do do that. I have a um, neighbor who uh, was asking the Lord to come into his life. And so I haven't heard any more from him about uh, Jesus. And um, it's been a couple of months since I... I'm questioning whether or not the uh, parable of the sower 
took place where uh, Satan comes and takes the seed that was planted and thrown into the ground, abandoning our God. And we serve to the Baalim. So they become idolaters. Now, are we idolaters? Well, we don't have idols per se. I hope we don't. Statues that we do obeisance to. But we have things basically that take our um, take our time away from God that we can uh, spend a lot of our time in other things than the Lord. And the list is on and on. Uh, politics and money, all sorts of things. And the Lord said to the sons of Israel, Well, is it not the Egyptians and the Amorites and the sons of Ammon and Moab and the Philistines? and Sidonians, and Amalek, and Canaan, that squeeze you out? And you cried out to me, and I delivered you from out of their hand earlier. It's 300 years now since um, the death of Joshua, because it mentions that here a little later on the next chapter. And you abandoned me and served other gods. On account of this, I will not proceed to deliver you, Proceed and yell to the gods whom you chose for yourselves and let them deliver you in the time of your affliction. And suppose we can do the same thing. You spent a lot of your tar- time on an automobile. And uh, I know someone that's spent a lot of time on an automobile and basically nothing but problems in the person's life. But that automobile is not going to deliver them in the time of affliction when it happens. And the sons of Israel said to Kirion, "Uh, We sinned. Do to us according to all as much as should be pleasing before you. Only rescue us in this day. Now we see earlier a deliver. Uh, Sozo is to deliver. Uh, Let them deliver you. Uh, Deliver. And we have the word salvation in the King James and a Savior. But I don't use those words. I use deliver because it's an ongoing thing. It's not a one-time thing. And I've mentioned this many, many times. But if it's a one-time thing, then it would be a rescue. And here we have rescue down here. Only rescue us in this day and instantly right at that time. Do something for us. And they removed the alien gods from out of their midst and serve to the Lord. And he was faint-hearted over the toil of Israel. The Lord opened himself up to help them. And there ascended up the sons of Ammon and camped in Gilead. So now changes here uh, with these sons of Ammon. I'll go back to the... So Ammon is up further north, up here. Ammon. And so now they have come, come down. Moab is uh, in here, and then Edom is down here. And they came and camped in Mizpah. And the people and the rulers of Gilead said, each man to his neighbor, Who's the man who shall begin to wage war with the sons of Ammon? For he shall be head to all the ones dwelling in Gilead. That's the end of this chapter. It's a short chapter, uh, something in between the judges. And now we are going to find out about the next judge in our next video seminar on chapter 11, uh, who is uh, Jephthah. And it mentions that he was a judge. So hope you'll join us and continue with the judges. Till then, God bless.